lovely people. Well, we are still busy with probability and we are still busy with Venn diagrams and yesterday you looked at what happens if I have two events. Now just a note for all of you is that you can only get Venn diagrams with an unknown so there can be an X in a Venn diagram but only when there is two events. It has been completely taken out where you have three events of an unknown. It is not assessed at matric level anymore. So you'll get a lot of textbooks and a lot of tutors showing you that you can tell them working with an X and three events in a Venn diagram is not assessed anymore. Right, so let's look, have a look at an example. This is Friday, the 3rd of April. I hope you're still okay and you're still at home and you're still enjoying your mother and your father's conversations and um, that you're working hard at maths. Okay, we're going to do one example and then you have um, three questions to do um, that's loaded on Google Classroom. Right, so let's have a look at this first. So the manager of a hotel in Pretoria recorded the number of guests sitting down for breakfast, lunch and supper on a daily or on a particular day. Of the 300 guests, so what is that? That is my sample space. So if I had to draw, and I'm drawing this bigger because I have three events, my total number of guests is 300. 29 did not arrive for any of the three meals. I don't know what's wrong with them. I mean, eating is my favorite sport. So 29 of them eliminated themselves from having any meals. Right, so if we read through the information, 153 were at breakfast, 161 at lunch, 145 at supper, 95 were at breakfast and lunch, 80 were at lunch and supper, 52 were at supper but did not arrive for any of the two meals. And there's the info I'm looking for. I want to know what the intersection will be. So if I create my three events, I have breakfast, lunch, and supper. I want to start in the middle. And in the middle, I have a total of 70 people. 52 were at supper but did not arrive for any of the other two. So only supper. We are looking at that piece there. That is 52 people there. 80 were at lunch and supper. So lunch and supper. The total there must be 80. Now I already have 70. How much do I have left? 10 of them. 95 were at breakfast and lunch. There's the breakfast, there's the lunch. So they must equal 95. I already have 70. So I'm short 25. 145 were at supper. Mm, so this entire event must equal 145. So if I add that, that's 80 plus 52, that's 132. What am I missing? 13 to get to 145. Right, 161 was at lunch. So that entire event there must add up to 161. So I've got 80, 105 already. So I'm missing 56 of them. And 153 were at breakfast. So if I take 153 minus 25 minus 70 minus 13, I get 45, 8 breakfast alone. Right, so calculate the probability 
that um, the guests chosen at random have been at both breakfast and lunch, but not supper. Both breakfast and lunch, but not supper. Remember the intersection is breakfast, lunch, supper. That 45 is breakfast alone. That 56 is lunch alone. Okay, breakfast and lunch is then 25 out of the 300 people and that's a 12. They've been at both breakfast and lunch. Both breakfast and lunch. Breakfast, lunch, no wait, 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 yeah, talking nonsense, both breakfast and lunch is 95 over 300, that's 19 over 60, breakfast only is 45 over 300, that's 3 over 20, being at more, one or more of the meals. Mm, one or more. So, how many of them are there? You can either add all those numbers, or you can say, 29 people did not have any meals. So how many people did have meals? So 1 minus 29 of the 300 that didn't have any meals, that means 271 did. Okay. Right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to give you work to do at home. Oops. This is another exercise I've got. Very nice. I will be posting the answers to you shortly and explain everything if I have to, even if it's through notes. Have a nice day. Goodbye.